This video is a walkthrough of answering an exam question. The only way how to learn how to answer questions is by actually answering questions. It doesn't work to just passively absorb the ideas, you have to do it yourself. So as I go through this question, I'm going to put in breaks where I say, now pause the video, and you should go and work out your own answer with pen and paper. Then you can resume and see how your answer compares to mine. You'll need the question in front of you. Click on the link underneath this video and it will take you to the question PDF. So let's get started. First thing to do when you see a question is skim read and look for keywords and figure out which section of the notes this question is about. Skimming through, these are the keywords that catch my eye. Predictor variable, response variable, supervised learning, maximum likelihood estimator, confidence interval and hypothesis test. The first few look like they're about supervised learning. And then later on, definitely confidence interval and hypothesis test. Next, look for question words. What's this question asking us to do? We're asked to find a maximum likelihood estimator, explain and give pseudocode for a confidence interval, explain and give pseudocode for a hypothesis test. And then this last bit, it's strange. There's no clear keywords, no clear uh, uh, hint about what we're meant to be doing there. Let's think a bit harder about that last piece. A second researcher asks you if A is better than B. Okay, so we actually need to pay attention to the text now. Reading the introduction and then rereading part D, here's the summary. We've got two researchers, researcher one and two. Researcher one asks, is there any difference between these two machine learning algorithms, A and B? Researcher two asked, is A better? So they're asking two different questions about the same data set. And that leads us to think this is a question about the interpretation of these confidence interval and hypothesis testing procedures. It's a question about one-sided versus two-sided intervals. And that's why parts B and C made such a big deal of one-sided versus two-sided. So all the stuff about supervised learning in the top, that looks like it's a red herring. It's not connected to the questions we actually have to answer. One other comment, think through the course, which topics are relevant. It's obvious there's something here about confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. We've seen two ways of doing them. We saw the parametric way in sections 8.1 8.2, and we saw a non-parametric way in section 8.3. So that's just something to bear in mind. Okay, let's start answering. First, part A. Give an expression for the maximum likelihood estimator theta hat. The question actually just says give an expression. It doesn't say derive or calculate or anything like that. It says give an expression. It's asking us for the answer. So all we need to do is write down the answer. It's only worth one mark. So that's, that's also a hint. It's not asking for anything complicated. Let's get on with the serious bits of the question. Part B, what is meant by a 95% confidence interval for theta hat? Here, you should remember the standard procedure that we set out for confidence intervals. It was always the same procedure, a three-step process. First, define a readout statistic. Next, give code to generate a synthetic data set. Next, compute a sample of the readout statistic, plot a histogram of values, and find a confidence interval. Let's get started. Define a readout statistic. Well, it told us in the question we want a confidence interval for theta hat, so that's our readout statistic. I'll define a function to return it. This, this actually brings up a question here. What's it a function of? The question didn't make abundantly clear what the data set is. The question talked about a data set of 500 records with x, i, y, i values. But then it tells us, you advise the researcher that na should be modeled as a binomial of n comma theta random variable with unknown parameter theta. So that's actually the data that we're going to be working on. This confidence interval is purely about the na, nb numbers. 
Next question, which of those numbers are random? Well, from the model that was written out, NA is random. We're going to model it as random. And obviously NB is random. I think it's reasonable to say we'll take N, N equals 500 to be fixed. We're going to imagine that the data set consists of a fixed number of records. And what's random is what the two machine learning algorithms made of those records. So let's just write that out. I shall consider the data set to be the pair NA comma NB, and I'll treat N equals 500 as a fixed number. So that's why my readout statistic is a function of NA, NB. It doesn't actually need NB, but for the sake of completeness, I'll just leave it in. Next, give code to generate a synthetic data set. This is um, sensible code. The question did advise us to use a particular probability model. It told us to model NA as a binomial random variable with parameters N and theta. And this is the standard way that we can generate synthetic data sets. We find the maximum likelihood estimate theta hat for the data that we were actually given. And then we just replay the parametric model and it gives a random output. Again, I'm considering the data set to be the pair NA comma NB. So I'm going to return here the random number I generated, the binomial value comma N minus it. Step three, compute a sample of T values, plot a histogram. This is the what our answer might look like. I'm just creating 10,000 um, random synthetic data sets, computing the test statistic on each of them. And let's suppose the histogram comes out like this. Report a confidence interval. We discussed several ways of producing confidence intervals. We can have a two-sided confidence interval or a one-sided. The question explicitly tells us, think about which one of those is best. So it's worth giving a bit of explanation about what we're doing here. In this question, the researcher asked, is there any difference between machine learning algorithm A and B? In other words, in terms of the parameters here, the researcher asked, is theta equal to a half or is it not? So what's implied by that statement is the researcher is open to differences in either, either direction. Large theta is, will tell them that they're not the same. Very small theta will tell them that they're not the same. So they probably want a two-sided confidence interval. This is the standard code snippet for pulling out a confidence interval. We use the np.quantile function and we tell it, hey, I want the bottom 2.5% and I want the top 2.5 percentile. In other words, the bottom 97.5 percentile. So we had better make sure we actually answer the question. Explain what is meant by a 95% confidence interval for theta hat. So here's a sentence we could write. A 95% confidence interval for theta hat is an interval, low comma high, such that the probability that the statistic theta hat that we're interested in lies in that range is equal to 95%. And when we're talking about probabilities, we're thinking of theta hat as being a random variable. We're thinking of all the different parallel universes, each with its own value of theta hat. So I've written it out here as saying the probability that theta hat of x lies in that range, where x is a random realization of the data set. OK, next question, part C. Question asks us, explain how to conduct a hypothesis test. One thing I might just say here, um, this also applies to part B. The question here says, explain how to conduct a hypothesis test of the hypothesis that theta equals a half. It doesn't say explain what is meant by hypothesis test in general. It's much easier to write an answer out for a concrete case, and that's what I'm going to do. So how do we conduct a hypothesis test? There's a standard three-step procedure for hypothesis testing. First, define a test statistic. Next, give code to generate a synthetic data set under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Third, sample a test statistic compared to the actual value that we observed and compute the p-value. It's worth setting up the preamble to a hypothesis test, though. The preamble involves saying what data set we're working on, 
what our model is and what the null hypothesis is. As before, we'll take the data set to be the pair NA, NB, where N, the total number of trials, is fixed at 500. The question tells us which model to use, the binomial of N, theta model for the value NA. And the null hypothesis that we're interested in, the question tells us what to use. And null hypothesis is that theta equals a half. And we're going to see if there's enough evidence in the data set to persuade us away from this null hypothesis. OK, first step, define a test statistic. Sometimes questions tell you which test statistic to use. This question doesn't. So where on earth do we find a test statistic from? One general tip is if you have a parametric model, write out the parametric model and get maximum likelihood estimators for any of the unknown parameters and base our test statistic on those MLEs. Here, there's only one unknown parameter, theta, and the maximum likelihood estimator for theta hat is NA divided by N. That's what we wrote out as our answer to part A. And that seems like a plausible guess for a test statistic. Let's just define that to be our test statistic. The idea of a test statistic is it should behave differently under H0 versus if H0 is false. If H0 is true, we'd expect this test statistic to be roughly equal to a half. And if H0 is false, the test statistic might be bigger or it might be smaller. Give code to generate a synthetic data set assuming H0 is true. That's easy, it's just the same as before. With one difference, for Fisher's hypothesis testing procedure, we generate a synthetic data set assuming H0 is true. So that's why I've said, let's said be a binomial random variable with parameters n and a half. The H0 assumption is that theta is a half. Step three, sample the test statistic on synthetic data sets. So I'm just going to do the normal thing. I'm going to compute the test statistic on a whole range, 10,000 of them, let's say, and then compute a p-value. Question actually asked us to define a p-value. This is the definition. The p-value is the probability of seeing a result, a value of the test statistic, at least as extreme as what we actually observed under the assumption that H0 is true. So what does as extreme as mean? Well, in this question, the researcher wants to know, is theta equal to a half? So if we see theta hat either very small or very large, both of them count as evidence against this researcher's null hypothesis. So that tells us we should be using a two-sided test. In other words, the p-value is given by this standard formula from lecture notes for two-sided tests. Next, part D. The question asks us, do we give the same advice, the same confidence interval, the same hypothesis testing to these two different researchers? Let's just summarize. Researcher one asks the question, is there any difference between the two machine learning systems? In other words, they ask the question, is theta equal to a half? Whereas researcher two asked, is A better? In other words, is theta greater than a half? They're asking two different questions, so it shouldn't be surprising if they end up with slightly different answers. In part B, what we did, we gave a two-sided confidence interval. We thought to ourselves, this researcher wants to pinpoint the value of theta, see where it is, whether it's a half or whether it's some distance either side of it. So a two-sided confidence interval is a reasonable thing to give. For researcher two, it's maybe not quite so clear what they want. The form of the question is, is A better? But that's a yes, no question. The confidence interval isn't answering a yes, no question. It's answering a how much question. So it's possible that we should be giving a one-sided confidence interval. 
let's say we could say give a one-sided confidence interval the probability that theta above or equal to some lower bound makes true the lower bound so that's 95 percent if we think the researcher wants to establish a large value for theta it's a bit hard to say what we should actually do the examiner would accept any reasonably sensible discussion no matter which answer you give the hypothesis testing thing is easier to answer though researcher one had a null hypothesis which said theta is equal to a half and we gave a two-sided p-value we decided that either large or small values of the test statistic constitute evidence against h naught so we gave the two-sided p-value for researcher two on the other hand their null hypothesis is that theta is less than or equal to a half i think that's what the question is asking the researcher two asks is a better so there ought to be a, a conservative view a default assumption and they need evidence to persuade them hey yes a is better so i would take researcher two to have this as their null hypothesis that theta is less than or equal to a half and they're asking is there enough evidence in the data for me to reject that null hypothesis if this null hypothesis is false it will make theta hat bigger In other words, large positive values of theta hat will constitute evidence against this researcher's null hypothesis. And that suggests we should be using a one-sided p-value. p will be the probability that theta hat is very large under the assumption that theta naught is true. Okay, so that ends the question. It's worthwhile at the end of a question reading rereading the whole question and asking yourself is there a theme this is useful in case the, the examiner has some narrative in mind it may help you to detect bits of the question which you could have answered better one thing we could pull out is the difference between a confidence interval and a hypothesis test they're slightly different procedures they're subtly different especially in the way that we sample synthetic data sets another theme that we might pull out is how does one interpret the answers from a confidence interval or a hypothesis test? Part D is really asking, can we understand what confidence intervals and hypothesis tests are for? What questions, what research questions they're trying to answer? So probably this is a question where the examiner has in mind, here are several different methodologies. Does the student know when it's appropriate to use one methodology or the other? Finally, I'll say this every time, read through the question, double check you've answered every single question word that you were asked to.